So this topic is Markowitz portfolio theory and really important to portfolio theory is the idea of measuring the risk and return of risky assets. So this video we're just going to be going over how we measure the risk and return on assets that we hold in a portfolio. So we start off with measuring the return which we do with the expected value. So if you're not familiar with it already, it's really simple. We basically assume that there are a range of possible returns that the asset could have, and each of those possible returns has a corresponding probability. And so we just say that the expected return is the weighted sum of the possible returns multiplied by their probabilities. So if we have a look at this example here, we would say that the expected return is 4% times the probability 0.3 plus 8% times 0.4 plus 11% times 0.3. And that just comes out to be 7.7%. So it's a really straightforward concept. And it's important that we understand the following results we get with regards to expected values. This will be important when we start to look at portfolios. So if we take a constant, so A is just a constant number here, and we multiply that by the variable which we're measuring the expected value of, then the expected value of that is just the constant times the expected value of the variable. Very simple result, and you can demonstrate it very easily. Uh, easily. So we've got the weighted sum of the return, or in this case A times the return, multiplied by the associated probability. And since you're multiplying A by every element of the sum, you're multiplying, that's the same as multiplying A by the entire sum, so you can just pull this out and get A times the weighted sum, and that's just the expected value. So two steps you're done. Let's bring that up a bit. We've also got this other result here. If you take the expected value of a sum of variables, then it's just the sum of the expected values of each individual variable. So again, just express this as the weighted sum pi times R1i plus R2i g equals expected value yeah the sum pi R1i plus pi R2i and then this in turn is just that plus that. So you can see that that works out as well. So really easy. Measuring the return is actually the simplest by far I'd say. Now we look on to measuring the risk. This is where it gets a little bit more tricky. We'll just introduce it now. So how do we measure the risk? We measure, we measure risk in terms of how much we expect the rate to differ from its expected value. So what you might expect there is that we would say maybe how about the expected value of the difference. Seems pretty logical, right? R minus, and we denote the expected value as mu. So this seems like a pretty reasonable thing, right? Except it turns out this becomes equal to expected value of R minus expected value of mu. Now mu being what we denote as the um, expected value, that's just a constant number. The expected value of a constant is just itself. This becomes mu minus mu which equals zero. 
So this tells us absolutely nothing. It's really pointless because what it turns out to be is that um, it's a weighted sum of a bunch of positive and negative numbers, like so, and they all cancel each other out. However, somebody then had the clever idea to do the following. Say we got the expected value of that same difference, but then we squared it. Now if you do that, instead of having these positive and negative numbers which will cancel each other out, the fact that they're squared means they all have to be positive, so you just get all these positive numbers, which you multiply by probabilities, which in turn have to be positive. You can't have a negative probability. And so you've just got a sum of a bunch of positive numbers, which is a positive number. So this actually does tell us something. And this is what we call variance of R, which we also denote sigma squared. And another way you can actually express this is if you expand out what's in the un in the inside there, you get r squared minus 2 mu r plus mu squared. Now we know that the sum of all these is the expected value of this sum is just the sum of the expected values. So we've got the expected value of r squared minus. Now the minus the 2 mu is a constant that we can pull out the front and then we've got 2 times mu times the expected value of r which by definition is mu so we've got 2 mu squared plus expected value of a constant mu squared and so you notice we've got some like terms here this just becomes the expected value of r squared minus mu squared nice and simple and we like to use this when we're actually uh, calculating, so it's very easy to work with. So that's our variance, and we typically don't actually like to use the variance as much as we like to use the square root of the variance, which we call standard deviation. So standard deviation equals the square root of the variance. And obviously we've got variance as sigma squared, so this is sigma. So let's do an example. What is the standard deviation of the stock from earlier? So, quite simply, it's going to be the square root, and we'll get onto that later, of e of r squared means we're just taking those rates, squaring them, and then multiplying them by the probabilities. So it was 0 0.04 squared times 0.3 plus 0 0.08 squared times 0.4 plus 0 0.0, uh, sorry, 0 0.11 squared times 0.3. And then we're subtracting the mean squared. So 0, 0.0, bugger. 7, 7 squared. And we take the square root of that whole thing. And that comes out to be 2.722%. Nice and simple. So now, remember we got these results for the expected value. We want to have a look at something similar here. So when we do this, this will be the expected value of a r1 minus a mu1 all squared, because the expected value of a times r is a times the expected value of r. This will come out to be expected value of a times r1 minus mu1 all squared which will be a squared times r1 minus mu1 squared. a squared is a constant, so we can pull it out the front, 
and you get a squared times the variance. And herein lies why we prefer to use the standard deviation to the variance, because we can see that this doesn't really scale linearly. If you have 10 times a risky asset, the variance will be 100 times the variance of 1, which doesn't make a lot of sense. But if we take the standard deviation, oh, A times R1, I meant to do, that'll be equal to the square root of A squared times the variance of R1, which will be A times the standard deviation of R1. This makes a lot more sense. So this is why we prefer to use it. And as for this, turns out this one is actually a bit more tricky, and we'll look at that in the next video. Cut study time with concise video summaries by top students. Visit SpoonFeedMe.com to view more free videos in this course and hundreds of others.